right. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to call the special call meeting to order. If we could have roll call, please. Vieira. Goose. Here. Carlson. Carlson. Dean here. Soda. Carlson here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Citro. Here. Miranda. Here. And Maniscalco. Here. All right. Thanks very much. Mr. Shelby, I believe you have to read the um you have to read the statement. My apologies, Mr. Chairman, members of Tampa City Council, Martin Shelby, City Council Attorney. Um it is um the 22nd of October of 2020, and uh, this is immediately following uh, today's workshop. It is a vet virtual special call um, agenda. Uh, because of the COVID-19 state of emergency, this virtual special call meeting of the Tampa City Council is being held in accordance with the declarations and provisions of the Governor's Executive Order 20-69, as amended and extended by EO 20-246, and by the emergency rules of procedure as adopted and amended by City Council. It's being conducted by audio teleconferencing only uh, with video presentations, which is remote participation referred to by the state of Florida statutes and rules as communications media technology, CMT. Now the purpose of this special call is a public hearing on an ordinance being presented for second reading and adoption relating to extending the time of Ybor City and East Tampa no fee zones uh, for multi multimodal trans, um, transportation impact fees and other general corrections. The public and the city uh, of Tampa citizens are able to watch, listen, and view this meeting on cable TV at Spectrum Channel 640, Frontier Channel 15, on the internet at tampagov.net forward slash live stream. The public has had the opportunity to participate um, and register in advance. They can talk through internet, voicemail, regular mail, or speak remotely during public comment. And also, if they don't have communications media technology, to be able to do so at the communications media technology that is provided for them at the Tampa Convention Center. Um, and uh, again, public comments, if there are any pre-recorded and live, will be heard at the start of the meeting at the direction of City Council. Written comments, which have been taken, have been distributed to City Council and are made part of the record today. Mr. Chairman, I thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Um, Madam Clerk, I remember seeing we have one registered speaker, but before we begin, do we have anybody at the Tampa Convention Center that is here to speak on this item? No, sir, we do not have anyone at the Tampa Convention Center. Okay, but we do have that one registered speaker. Is that person on the line? No, it was Mr. Mark Bentley, and he's not currently logged on at the time. Okay. All right, if he happens to log in in the next few minutes, then we'll we'll take it up. But uh, okay, we have this one item. Who uh, wishes to speak on this item? Uh, good afternoon, Chair. Good afternoon, Council. Vic Bide, Mobility Department. Uh, on order. On the border. Yes, Mr. Sir? Chairman. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm just trying to, in light of the fact we're going 24 hours on this meeting, I'm, just, I'm trying to speed things up. Um, so this is the multimodal item in regard to Ybor City and that sort of thing we discussed at length a couple of weeks ago. Um, I've had many conversations with Mr. Bide and, and Ms. Grimes, and I think we've reached a, a, a good compromise that I hope everybody can, can live with. So Mr. Bide, you want to cut to the chase and just give them the compromise? Sure, and thank you for that. So, so the compromise or what we're coming back with is an updated ordinance that extends the uh, uh, no multimodal uh, transportation impact fee zones for East Tampa, Ybor City, but we're also adding West Tampa and Drew Park. Uh, and the reason is we looked at the records from 2015 uh, when they used to be on this list as well, and we couldn't find a clear rationale for why they were excluded. So uh, in the spirit of continuing the policy, we're including those we're proposing that uh, these zones be extended for uh, a period of three years, at the end of which uh, we will come back to council with an updated policy based on nationwide best practices of what works with impact fees, what sort of incentives, what sort of zones, and what type of rates. Uh, it, we do have Susan Johnson Velez from the legal department. Should there be any questions related to this ordinance, 
which was submitted uh, to you earlier this week. Uh, happy to take any questions. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Councilman Carlson. Yeah, um, I, I did speak to Mr. Bentley and I have spoken to other um, uh, interested parties who have developments ongoing. And I, I think the concern from folks is that uh, they they had already planned to make investments with this um, expectation in mind. And so it's not fair to them to take this away completely. Um, so the folks I talked to thought that three years was a reasonable amount of time because they their planning doesn't go out more than three years. Uh, but I I hold with the um, the the notion that this is the wrong kind of uh, economic development incentive. And since we know that our economic development plans and processes failed completely in the last 10 years, uh, we need to rethink all of them. Uh, one of the ideas that I threw out to some of these folks, and this is just an idea, but I hope that um, Mr. B-Day's team or whomever will, will research alternative ideas. But one idea is that if you took the money if you if you collected this money and then took an equivalent amount, that money has to go into mobility. But if you took an equivalent amount of money and put it into um, a a fund grant fund, uh, what if you uh, offered, for example, a twenty percent uh, rebate to tenants who in their first year uh, to tenants who signed a five year lease in one of these areas? Because as I said in the last meeting, there's no shortage of buildings in these areas. Um, so what this incentive does, this this current incentive does, is it encourages people to build buildings. And of course, that helps the city because we collect ad valorem taxes. But it doesn't really help the communities that we're trying to serve because what the communities want is buildings that have people or, or businesses in them. They want businesses that will serve them. And what's happening in these areas is there are too many empty buildings right now and they really need tenants. And so I... I I think we need to relook at our incentives to try to figure out how to drive uh, business. Uh, the the landholders that I spoke to said they would much rather us take the small amount of money and leverage it into into higher numbers of revenues rather than getting a small incentive on the front end. So I think if we could just be creative, um, we can do benchmarking, but but it could be that we'll come up with something better than other cities are doing also. Um, and, and let's come back and try to do something um, really meaningful after this. But I will uh, vote for the three years, even though I'm against this in the long run. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Council, this is Susan Johnson Velez, Senior Assistant City Attorney. I just wanted to um, piggybacking on to Vic's comments. Um, what you have before you that I sent um, earlier this week is a substitute ordinance that accomplishes uh, what Mr. B. Day described. And so, you would need to have first reading on that ordinance today and then second reading um, at a later date that allows time for it to be properly advertised. Mr. Chairman, Martin Shelby, may I ask a question? Sure, go ahead. So Ms. Johnson Velez, then the ordinance that is printed on the final agenda is not the substitute and the title is not the same, is that correct? Let me... Um... Let me just take a quick look here. That's correct. The ordinance, the substitute ordinance is the one that was attached to my memorandum to council on October 20th of 2020. Okay. Does, uh, does council have that in front of them and whoever is going to be reading that ordinance? I'm going to ask for a motion, by the way, Mr. Chairman, that the substitute be accepted first and do a roll call vote on that. And then, uh, and then to make sure that the correct title is in front of the council member who is going to read the substitute. Okay. Is that, is that clear for everyone? I, yeah, the agenda was sent. I mean, I'm sorry, the uh, substitute motion was sent to the clerk. A substitute ordinance was sent to the clerk. The question, the question is who has that ordinance in front of them, that memorandum in front of them who is able to read the title um, for the purposes of first reading today. Is there a council member who uh, has that um, uh, memorandum directly in front of them and able to read that title? I, I believe I, I have not, the I, I just forward the email, so whoever has access to their email, they can open that memo up and have that in front right. Thank you. I see it here. If you check your email, I mean, it just came through to me. It's loading, so everyone should have it. Um, if not, uh, I'll pass the gavel to Citro and I will read the, um, the substitute. Uh, yeah, let me just get 
Let if me I get can, to Mr. it here. If I can, Mr. Chairman, yeah. I have uh, asked Council to entertain a motion to accept the substitute and have that done by roll call first. All right. Do I have a motion to accept the substitute by Council? So we well, have a motion from Councilman Goose with a second from Councilman Citro. Roll call vote, please. Goose? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. Austin? Yes. Vieira? Dingfelder? Yes. Citro? Yes. Miranda? Miranda? After you are muted. Miranda, is that yes Miranda. or no? Yes, yes. I was muted by the organizer. I'm sorry. Motion carried with Vieira being absent. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, now, Mr. Shelby, uh, you'd like us to read the ordinance at this point? No, I'd like to ask for public comment first. This is a public hearing. Okay. Is there anybody in the public that wishes to speak on this item, item number one for this special call meeting? Anybody in the public, anybody at the convention center? Chair, there's no one at the Tampa Convention Center, and we have no one else registered to speak on this item. Mr. Chairman? All right, then we can't. Yes. Do we ever open to be hearing on vote number one? You know uh, what? I don't think we did. Let's just get a, a motion okay. to open the, the hearing. I, I opened uh, item right. number one on this special call meeting today, Mr. Chairman. So Second. Right, a motion, motion from Councilman Miranda, second from Councilman Goods. Any opposition? By unanimous consent, the hearing is open. Um, having said that, again, I'll ask just for the record if it's necessary. Is there anybody in the public that wishes to speak? No, sir, there's no one at the Tampa Convention Center and no one else is registered to speak on this item. All right, can we uh, can we close the public hearing before we read the subject? Motion closed, Mr. Chairman. Second. Second. We have a motion. motion closed from Councilman Moran to second Councilman Citro. Any opposition? Uh, hearing no opposition, opposition by unanimous consent, the public hearing is now closed. Uh, I have the substitute ordinance in front of me. Does anybody else have it? Uh, that wishes to read it at this time. If not, I'll pass the gavel to Citro. I will take it. Uh, take the gavel, Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Just for the record, all I, right. Thank you for. Yeah. Just for the record, uh, Dingfelder has seen it, as I'm, I imagine most of the council or all of council has seen the substitute amend, amend, uh, substitute ordinance. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, and Mr. I have yeah, an Mr. ordinance. Chairman, and yeah. Mr. Chairman, yeah. just just for. Um, the purposes of the record this is for uh first reading consideration that's right okay all right i have an i have an ordinance of the city of tampa florida amending the city of tampa code section 25-74 a6 to reinstate and authorize the no multimodal transportation impact fee zones for drew park east tampa West Tampa and Ybor City, as more particularly described in the City of Tampa Code Section 25-74A6, and effective for a period of three years, commencing October 21st, 2020, and expiring three years thereafter on October 20th, 2023. Amending Chapter 25, Article 3, Exhibit 4, No Multimodal Transportation Impact B Zones by replacing MAP 25.1, 25.1G, and 25.1I, and adding 25.1K and 25.1H, providing for repeal of all ordinances in conflict, providing for separability, providing an effective date. Second. The motion has been made by Councilman Maniscalco, seconded by Councilman Miranda. Any discussion? Yes, sir. Councilman Dick Felder. Thank you, Mr. Um, the, I just wanted to, to, to uh, make two points. Number one is um, just for the record that nobody should rely on this ordinance lasting any more than three years. Okay, we're passing it for three years, but as a matter of record, it's only three years. It could be passed by a future council to, to extend it. But right, you know, it bothers me a little bit that people say, that people complain and say that they, they relied on something that was for five years. 
and this is being passed for three years and it may never come up with you. So that's number one. Number two is staff has told me that they, uh, that they will do a comprehensive analysis uh, sometime over the next month. I want to make sure when they do that they include a careful study model of the districts, but a, a micro study within the districts. And Mr. Bide and I have already discussed that, but I just want to put that on the record that they have no objection to that. Thank you. Any further discussion? Roll call vote, please. Miranda. Miranda. Yes. Petro. Yes. Carlson. Yes. Maniscalco. Yes. Dingfelder. Yes. Goods. Yes. Vieira. Motion carried with Vieira being absent. Second reading and adoption will be held on November 19, 2020 at 9.30 a.m. Mr. Chair, I hand you back Thank to you. Me. Thank you very much. All right, that concludes the special call meeting. We are adjourned uh, 5.01 oh, p.m. is when we will begin. Oh, moved. Uh, we have a motion received from Councilman Miranda. Thank you for the special call meeting. Second. Yes, sir. Motion, motion from Councilman Miranda, second from Councilmember Goods. Is there any uh, objection to the motion? Hearing no objection by unanimous consent, motion passes. We are adjourned and we will um, come back at 5.01 p.m. for the evening session. Thank you very much. Thank you.